G'day guys and welcome back to True Footy for round 23 is just the tips. We've just got a couple of games to go in the season and uh, funnily enough we still are trying to get a good read on exactly how the final eight will shape up. There's a, a number of huge games in this upcoming week as well which is great. Obviously starting the round with a potential grand final preview. First versus second in Collingwood versus Brisbane. So we're going to get stuck into all of that. I just got off a flight from Canada at 11am this morning. I'm horrendously jet lagged and I tried to uh, get a head start on the jet lag by uh, taking a sleeping pill on the flight, which I'm hoping will pay off in the long term, but at the moment I'm incredibly drowsy. So forgive me if I'm a little bit sloppy in this video, but decided to crack straight into the content because it's a big time of the year and finals just around the corner. I can't wait. We're gonna get stuck into the prediction shortly, but the first thing we're gonna do is shout out the weekly winners from all the competitions we have going here on True Footy. Last week I got six out of nine. The three that I got wrong were Carlton beating Melbourne. I really I really wanted to tip Carlton in that game, uh, if you recall, but I tipped Melbourne because I'm a bitch. Again, Hawthorne versus the Western Bulldogs. I wanted to tip a Hawthorne and I didn't. I really need to trust my gut more, but then again, like every time I do trust my gut, I get it wrong. So St. Kilda also beating Richmond was the third one I got wrong. Otherwise, it was pretty smooth sailing. I moved up five places to 546th, right in the crapshoot of mediocrity in the table, but we'll shout out who is doing well. That includes the round 22 winner who is WCEHZ with a perfect round of tipping, nine correct tips, and a margin of zero. So well done, WCE. I presume an Eagles fan. Shout out to you. The tipping leader is once again Oscar Tuktan with 140 correct tips and uh, absolutely killing it. With two rounds to go, he is poised to take out the whole competition. The fantasy leader is once again Bailey's Brothers, who looks like he's got an unassailable lead now, which is fantastic going. My fantasy team is not even worth mentioning. But one thing that is worth mentioning is that Western Stank Lords aka my team, won this week on game day squad. So we've got 150 people in that competition, guys. So thank you for jumping on board. For those who haven't joined yet, it would mean a lot to me in the channel if you did. It's the top link in the description. It's basically an alternative to fantasy, which I think is way more fun. And I spend a lot more time doing. And that's proven in the results. I beat everyone in the competition this week. And I also placed sixth in the entire country for this round. So we're going to do a dedicated video to that as I uh, always do each week. But shout out to me, I guess. It's nice to have a win. It's been a it's been a bad year, both in terms of tipping and fantasy, and of course, being an Eagles fan, but I'll take this win. That's fantastic. All right, so we're going to crack in. There are 18 games left in the season, as you can see uh, down the bottom right there. First versus second now, with Port sliding down to third and Melbourne down to fifth. Carlton, um, uh, pretty, well, I was going to say comfortable there in fifth spot, but that's certainly not true. Sydney up into the top eight. That's good for them. And the Bulldogs have slipped up in the last couple of weeks uh, with a loss to Hawthorne there. GWS sliding down to 10th. That, uh, that surprised me a little. Their form was great. They dropped two in a row. Geelong down there in 11th is looking less and less likely they're going to feature in finals this year. But we'll crack into these tips, guys. So the first game of the week is arguably the best, you'd say, with Collingwood versus Brisbane. This is a tough one. So it's worth noting it's at Marvel Stadium, not the MCG. And then where, that's where I think Collingwood would have a distinct advantage if it was at the MCG. The Lions don't play so bad at Marvel. So this will be a hot contest. The, the Pies obviously got the job done over the, the Cats last week, winning by eight points. So a little bit injury hit at the moment with guys like Moore and Dacos, etc. Really, really key players for them. Brisbane overcame Adelaide, who finished fast in that game and they won by six points and the Crows are a tricky proposition. So any wins are a good win, particularly at this point of the year. Collingwood has been the better team this year, but I'm, I'm going to tip the lines here. I think their form line is a little more convincing. I think that's fair to say. And the Pies obviously with a few fallen soldiers might be a bit vulnerable. If this game was at the MCG, I would be tipping the Pies. But I reckon we're going to see an upset here. And I reckon the Lions will shock the Pies and win by nine points. And you got Richmond versus North Melbourne at the MCG. From memory, Richmond was one of the two teams that North beat last year, if I'm not mistaken. Or did they get close? I think they got out to a big lead and maybe lost at the end. Either way, it's irrelevant now because that was a whole season ago. Richmond up into 13th spot there um, of coming off that loss against St. Kilda. But the golf between these two teams is still pretty strong. North Melbourne nearly got the job done over Essendon. That was a good game to watch, but unfortunately fell short. And I was kind of hoping that they would beat Essendon so that West Coast could win another game and still get pick one, but I digress. Look, anything can happen this late in the season. Obviously, Richmond's got a couple of retirees, so they might be wanting to go out on a high. Certainly have no motivation with the draft because they don't have a first round draft pick. So they'll throw everything at this game and the final week as well. And I will think that Richmond should be far too good for North. Their form line suggests that they've been a lot better. And I will say Richmond by six goals. Gold Coast versus Carlton at Metricon. I'm going to keep calling it Metricon for some reason. It just rolls off the tongue better than Heritage Bank Stadium. But these two teams didn't meet that long ago uh, with Carlton getting a 10 goal win and that was kind of the start of Carlton's 
re-emergence as a half decent side. They meet however many weeks later, eight or nine weeks later, uh, this time obviously in Queensland, but Carlton have shut up to fifth spot and just coming off a good win against the Demons. I think they've have they won like eight in a row now. They've been really, really good, beating some really, really good teams in there. In fact, three of the top four teams above them. So Carlton are obviously red hot at the moment. The Gold Coast Suns are patchy. Their best performance in recent times was a good win over the Brisbane Lions, but around that, they've been really poor. So we could get a good version of Gold Coast here, but either way, you'd be mad to tip against Carlton in this current form. I'll say this is a convincing win. I'll say a good 41-point win to the Blues. GWS versus Essendon at the Sydney Showground, aka Giant Stadium. I think it's still called that. I lose track with these stadiums changing names. I think you know by now. And Squiggle does this thing where it shows their original name of the, the ground. But anyway, GWS versus Essendon. This should be a good game. Ninth versus 10th. And uh, I'm surprised to see Essendon higher on the ladder than GWS. I've been talking the Giants up. Obviously had seven wins in a row and beat some good teams. Came unstuck against the Swans and Port Adelaide uh, last week, but I think they've got the power at the wrong time in particular. Essendon, you know, they've played the worst two teams in the comp in the last two weeks and won by one point and nine points. So still ticking along in terms of wins, but in terms of the form, I'm not really convinced by Essendon on current form. They deserve to be where they are in terms of the mix for finals, but can I trust them to go to Sydney and knock off GWS who have been pretty damn good this year? And I would argue better than Essendon. So I'm gonna tip the Giants here at home by eight or 20 points. I think it'll be a decent game. I don't think there's a huge gap between these two sides. And I feel like Essendon played GWS all right, but Giants at home, they should win by around three goals. St Kilda versus Geelong at Marvel Stadium. Now this this one could have some potential. I feel like we usually get good games between these two sides. I could be making that up, but at this point in the season, you look at St Kilda there in sixth and Geelong in 11th. Geelong, I think, can still win the last two games and miss finals. They're, they're in serious danger of missing out entirely here. And the Saints have probably improved in recent times, it has to be said, with a most recent win over Richmond. It depends what Geelong shows up in this game, to be honest, because St Kilda are a little bit more predictable. You know, they're they're definitely dipped in the uh, since the first couple of months of the season, and even some of their wins this year, they haven't looked like anywhere near the team they were in the first month of the season. And Geelong, there's a little bit more of a gap between their best and worst. It was a big game against the Pies last week where they went down by eight points, um, but can they back it up in a game where this could potentially be a dead rubber for the Cats? So I think the Cats are the better team, to be honest, despite what the latter says there. I do have this funny feeling that the Saints might beat them, but I think I'm going to go conservative here which never really pays off for me. And I'll say the Cats win this by 18 points to sort of keep them in the mix, but I think it might still be too late for the Cats. Adelaide versus the Swans. Now, this is an absolute doozy because the Swans are in some improved form currently. They've won all of their last five games, the most recent of which a uh, four-goal win over the Gold Coast. Suns, a team that can prove to be tricky to beat at the SCG for some reason. And Adelaide have also had a solid run of five games in the sense that they've lost to some good opposition. So they lost to the Giants in Adelaide. The Giants have proven tough for the Crows to beat in recent times. And since then, you know, they nearly beat Melbourne, they nearly beat the Lions at the Gabba, then they smashed Port Adelaide as well. So I'm not too concerned about Adelaide's form line here. Both sides are playing for a slim chance of finals here. The Crows are less likely, but there's still absolutely a chance to make it, particularly with that percentage. This is a really tough one. I am probably, I'm leaning towards the Crows here, but the Swans make me nervous. I have not tipped them well this year at all. This could easily be the sort of game that the Sydney pull out a, a typically Sydney performance and, and win a tough game away from home, but I'm uneasy. I'm uneasy. The Crows are a good team at home in particular. They've lost a couple of games there this year, but finished really strongly against the Lions, only losing that by a goal. I've just got a feeling Sydney's going to win this for some reason. So this is more just gut feel than logic. The Swans are typically good, you know, with their backs against the wall in particular, and they're good away from home too. And I feel like they're pretty good against the Crows in Adelaide too. So I'm gonna tip the Swans here to effectively end Adelaide's season. And what has been a good year in terms of progress? It could go either way, but I'm gonna tip the Swans. Then we got the Bulldogs and West Coast at Marvel Stadium, uh, God. So the Bulldogs were a bit disappointing against the Hawks. You know, they got out to a bit of an early lead from memory and the Hawks closed them down and they did finish strongly, the Dogs, but ultimately the Hawks proved too good. Seven wins does seem unusually high for a team currently in third last, but we're not talking about Hawthorne here. The Bulldogs have been up and down this year. I honestly think they should be higher with the quality of their team, and I think they've let themselves down with some disappointing performances at bad times this year. There's plenty on the line for them here. They need to win to stay in finals contention, um, and I don't think the Eagles are going to have too much resistance to a very good Bulldog side. I am expecting an improved West Coast performance after a horrific derby. You know, For all our faults, when we've put in a really 
really pathetic performance, we've bounced back the following week and at least showed some heart. So I'm hoping it's not 100 points. I also think um, form at Marvel Stadium isn't too bad for whatever reason. We play okay there for the most part. That being said, there's not too much more point analyzing this. It'll be minimum 60 points. Let's just go 70 points and that would probably be an improvement for West Coast at this point. Then we've got the D's and the Hawks at the MCG. This is a tricky one. The Hawks are in fantastic form right now, just knocking off the Bulldogs and Collingwood in consecutive weeks. They are looking every bit, almost a finals quality team at the moment. Obviously, they're nowhere near contention because it took them really late in the season or relatively late in the season to really improve. But the improvement we've seen is very, very compelling and that gives them a good chance against the D's who are a little bit vulnerable here. Obviously, lost in the dying stages to Carlton last week, but still playing for that top four spot. And I think think are a much more difficult opponent than the Western Bulldogs. That being said, Melbourne's, you know, run of form up until that Blues loss has been solid enough. There's not uh, too much shakiness there. The Blues are obviously a very good team at the moment too, but Hawthorne has beaten better teams than Melbourne. Well, specifically, they, they've beaten Collingwood. I, I don't know. I, I think Melbourne are not this rock-solid, reliable team that they were a couple of years ago. Naturally, they are shaky. Hawthorne is good enough to give them a shake. I will still tip them pick the Ds, that is, because top four is on the line here. If they drop this game, there is a chance that they miss the top four. So this would uh, just about seal the top four, I think. I'll tip Melbourne by 24 points in a good game. Then you've got Fremantle versus Port Adelaide at Optus Stadium. This one is a potentially interesting game. Uh, Fremantle, for travelling sides, generally will put up a fight at home, even if they're the less fancied team with that home crowd. And obviously got a lot of confidence out of smashing West Coast by 101 points. In the biggest derby win ever, that sucks. That being said, uh, not to talk too much from Fremantle, but I think West Coast was so pathetic that I think we kind of almost put that aside in terms of using it as a reason why Fremantle would beat Port Adelaide, to be honest. And I think even though Fremantle are very equipped to beat Port Adelaide here, I think there's a, you know, there's a lot of quality in that team for sure. They've been a little bit pick and choosy about when they've shown it this year. But what I will say about Fremantle is that they will often rise to the occasion. So if they're playing a good team, no matter where it is, you give them a sneaky chance. That being said, I think they're getting Port Adelaide at a bad time. Port Adelaide just had four losses in a row and then snapped out of that form streak with a 71-point win over GWS. So I think it's just a case of getting Port at the wrong time, and I expect Port Adelaide to win this. It will be a good game, though. Let's say Port Adelaide win this by 12 points in a heartbreaking loss for Fremantle. But Fremantle are good enough to win this game. So there you have it, guys. That is my predictions for round 23 as we look at the ladder. Uh, still, obviously, Brisbane in second, despite me having them beating Collingwood. Port Adelaide consolidating third. Likewise, Melbourne with fourth. Sydney up into sixth. Potentially a home final would be crazy, uh, you know, considering where they were, you know, a month or two ago. The Bulldogs up into seventh. St Kilda just hanging on to that top eight spot. The Giants and Geelong in particular are still a chance for finals. You'd think from about 10th down, it's probably too tough now, particularly if Adelaide lose to Sydney but that is a massive game that's going to influence the top eight. That's probably one of the most exciting prospects this weekend. That's probably the game I'll tune into the most outside of West Coast. The top two clash is obviously going to be, you know, very, very compelling and, you know, potentially a grand final preview, but Adelaide versus Sydney is uh, very, very juicy. But that does set up a scintillating round 24, which we will, of course, cover next week, guys. But let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with, uh, what's your upset of the round. My upset of the round is probably Hawthorne to beat Melbourne. I think there is a, a real chance of that. And game of the round for me, as I said, is Adelaide versus Sydney. But as always, I welcome your comments in the sec comment section below. Really appreciate the support. Plenty of action to go left in the season, guys. One more week, then we're going to cover the final series, of course, and then through to the drafts and trade and stuff like that. So plenty of action to unfold. It's getting to that exciting part of the season. It'll be great to have you along for the ride. So thanks very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.